Hey Stat Squad, and welcome back to another JASP tutorial. What we're going to be doing in this tutorial is looking at how to calculate probabilities. Um, and we're just going to be mostly just using contingency tables and doing that. Um, so you may recognize this data set. We used it in the past. Uh, this data set is looking at school, uh, and in particular we were looking at the uh, weekday alcohol intake versus the weekend alcohol con uh, alcohol uh, consumption or intake and you can see we have all these different um, other variables uh, that go along with that so we have uh, parent status we have um, uh, who the primary guardian is we have uh, how long it takes for them to travel to campus how often they study lots and lots of different stuff so the thing to keep in mind I think uh, anytime you're analyzing your data using JASP is you want to be mindful of what the variable is Ideally, we would be using variables that can easily group data together. What does that mean? Basically, if we're looking at school, for example, we only have two different variables of school, right? We have UMass and we have WSU. Uh, if we wanted to look at age, on the other hand, we can see that we have lots of different ages. We have, you know, anywhere between 19 and 26, and that's going to be really messy if we try to plot that in a table, so we don't want that. If we look at uh, the daily alcohol, uh, intake it's only on a scale of one to five that's fine um, if we look at family size we see that it's either greater than three or less than three um, uh, I don't know what happens if you're if you only have three <laughs> I don't know why it's not that's not in there um, but you get the idea so you want to find variables that are easily that can easily group stuff together you don't want for example you don't want GPA because if you get GPA let's see can I yeah, it's not popping up that's fine but in GPA you can see that we have all these different values right which would be a nightmare in terms of grouping them so we're not going to do that all right so where we're going to get started is we're going to go to frequencies and we're going to click on this tab this is our first time adventuring over into this tab and we want to do contingency tables you'll see there's a lot of stuff here um, some of these things we're going to come back to later in the semester but for now we're just going to do contingency tables and then this is going to give us a pretty straightforward way of creating these tables. Um, you can you have your 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 variables over here on the left, and you can just slide them into uh, into these different um, uh, categories depending on how you want to organize your data. Uh, so let's say I am interested in uh, arranging school by family size. So those are the two variables that I want to look at. So I have family size as the column school as the row and so you can see right here we have our contingency table nice and neat and so we have um, uh, for UMass we have you know 29 uh, uh, participants who had a uh, family size greater than three and 17 that were less than three and then for Westfield State University you have uh, 252 that were above three and 97 that were less than three giving us a total of 349 okay cool so this is all great stuff but if you're looking at this, you're, you may be wondering, like, well, where do I get the probabilities out of this? It's just frequencies. So you can do it by hand if you want to, but there's another way to do it. You go down to cells. So if you go over here to cells, this gives you uh, a, a way to calculate the percentages. And you can do this by row or by column. And it really depends on how you want to analyze your data. So, for example, if I said, if the question was... Um, if a student, what is the what is the probability of a student from University of Massachusetts ha coming from a family greater than three? So we're looking just at students from UMass, right? So we're just going to select, we're going to analyze it by rows. That's what we're looking at right here. And so we can say that for UMass, for those that are greater than three, there's 63% of our data points are greater than, uh, have family sizes are greater than a family size greater than three and then uh, um, about 36 percent is a family size less than three so that's as straightforward as that now if we wanted to reframe that question a little bit then we could say um, uh, how many uh, students who come from families less than three are from Westfield then we want to look just at less than three so we want to uh, arrange this by column now so you calculate that, and then you can trace it down, and you can see that uh, of of every student that comes from a less than three uh, family, um, that uh, you know about 85% of all of that comes from Westfield. So 
Um, and that's like basically saying like, okay, that in your total data, you had 114 people that reported that, 97 of them are, are, less, are from Westfield, and so 97 divided by 114 is 85. So you get the idea there. All right, so we can, uh, so this is as basic as it gets, uh, but we can, if we want to, move this over and let's put in something a little more complicated. Let's look at the weekend alcohol consumption. So in this variable, you can see that things are a little bit different now. Uh, and actually, if we wanted to, we could probably just move, well, yeah, let's put school back in there. Um, for here, uh, if we wanted to, we can uh, again do the same idea where we can say like, remember that five means drinks a lot, one means doesn't drink at all. Uh, and so if we were to say, you know, um, what percentage of Westfield State University students are engaged in dangerous drinking levels or drinking too much? How do we figure that out? Well, we're just looking at Westfield State, so we're just going to look here. We're going to hit the row option here, and then we're going to just trace it over. We're going to look at this, you know, the, the fifth column in this row, so we see about 7.4% of Westville State, stu Westville State University students are engaged in dangerous levels of drinking. Um, so that's kind of how you get that. Even though now you know we have more, more columns that we're dealing with, it's the same principle. So you may be wondering about some of these other options. Some of these other options, if you wanted to, you can like kind of change the, the way that they are ordered. Uh, if you wanted to, I guess, there's no big deal. Um, and then over here in statistics, uh, you'll see down here there are different tests. Um, uh, we haven't talked about the chi-square test yet uh, in our class, but what the chi-square test is, is it basically tells you whether or not um, uh, the, the populations that you have are evenly distributed. Um, or if they're not, then that means that in this case that, oh, maybe one of these schools drinks disproportionately more than the other. Um, and that's what this value down here is, the, the chi-square. We're not going to go into that yet. That's, that's, a, that's a whole other conversation. But you can see that there are lots of different things you can select here if you are interested in those things. So for example, if you are working with specifically nominal data, then you could use these, uh, these uh, pieces down here. And if we wanted to, we could get more, we could get even, uh, even more, um, uh, we could break it down even more. And so here we have another contingency table where now we're looking at guardians uh, by alcohol content and so on and so forth. So we can play around with these different things. But that's, that's basically it. That's basically all you need to know about probabilities for this, uh, for this week uh, or for this, this chapter. So thanks so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see you later. Bye.